difference between being alone and being lonely, I think, is very clear cut because there are people who are alone and enjoy it. People who've always had their own company, prefer their own company, are happy to go on holiday by themselves, are happy to live alone. I'm not one of them. For me, I find living alone for the first time, as I did at the age of 71, is not much fun. And so for us, loneliness can strike suddenly. People can choose to be alone. I don't think many people would choose to be lonely. Lonely is very cor corrosive. People who lose their driving licence, people who lose their sight or their hearing, people who lose a partner who has shared with them so many of their life experiences. And I think that, that sense of loss is, for me, what creates loneliness. That it's important that research faces addresses challenges within society. It, it listens to those challenges within society and those challenges in society shapes the type of research that we do and that research then for, informs government policy and, and, and has a real impact on, on, on the outside world. If Lancaster University is doing good work in this field and it can feed it back to the population in general, I think that's a good idea. And let's face it, I mean it, it shouldn't be but London is still incredibly dominant and uh, so getting the message into London is an important part of networking. Well, we, but more broadly, we're an internationally engaged university, so we have campuses all, all over the world. So part of that, being an internationally engaged, engaged university, it's important that we're in a, a major international city like London, talking about major, ma major international issues. And of course, as soon as our, we start talking about things which impact upon government policy, it's important that we're here in London, uh, where the centre of uh, government and, is, is within the UK. In my mind, it's absolutely essential that, that we get the widest possible um, congregation to contribute to this. It's because I think you're getting a different perspective from different people. There's obviously Esther Ranson, who's actually really gone and set something up, and she's probably not drawing on academic research. I mean, I think it was vital to have Esther's introduction at the beginning because she speaks so closely to people's experience and then to hear Paul Burstow to get the political perspective. Uh, Age UK obviously has the big practical perspective and uh, then the academic perspective on, you know, where does the knowledge come from? Loneliness among older people, isolation among older people is the principal concern now of so many p people who are legislating for the future, who are creating strategies for the future. I think it's going to be the zeitgeist it's going to be the buzzword. So I think universities have taken it on board, or at least Lancaster University has, and they're quite right. It, it gives a good opportunity to show, the, show how the research can lead into policy developments um, with Age UK or, or, or with Silverline or, or into government policy. And, and it's, it, it's, that, it's that relevance of, of, of the research and that, that feed into, into, real, into real government policy or, or policies that charities will take on, is, uh, is, is in, which makes our research so valuable. I think the work that's done, the context that it's put in and the dimensions that, it's, that brings to us delivering practical projects is, is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Keep up the good work.